Now joining me to take a look at the situation in Sierra Leone and reactions trailing the speech by President Julius Maadabio are two gentlemen, Honorable Abdul Kargo, National Secretary General of the All Progressives Congress Party in Sierra Leone, and Abdul Malik Bangura, a journalist and PR expert. They join us from Sierra Leone. Thank you for finding time, gentlemen. Now let me start with you, um, Bangura. Uh, with the first questions, and I'll, I'll, I'll be asking you this very quickly. Uh, it's been days after the protests, and, and we hear that deaths and imposition of curfews have followed, while we're still having pockets of protests by various groups. Why are these protests persisting? Um, first of all, to make things clear, the curfew was lifted yesterday. There is no longer a curfew nationwide or in some parts of the country. At about um, 6.30 yesterday, um, GMT, which were like 30 minutes towards the start of the curfew, um, the police, um, Inspector General of Police, who is um, on um, fire, fire um, um issued a statement, um, let me say, revoking the, 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 national, the curfew that were imposed in Kamakwe, in the northwest region, in Makeni, in the northeast region, and in Freetown, in the west region. So all the curfew has been lifted because according to the police, they said that the situation is now relatively calm and um, they can ascertain that um, we now have um, peace and uh, they have um, weighed the situation and they know that uh, we are now in a um, let me say, uh, 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 in the position of um, lifting the curfew. So as we are now, there is no curfew. It has gone past 8, 10 here. There is no longer curfew. But it is been a very funny day here in Freetown because since the lifting of the curfew, we've never seen uh, a first working day. So many people are on center hook hoping to see that tomorrow everyone returns back to work and um, seeing that um, situation remains calm as the police has um, allayed fears. So, so far, everything is quite clear and um, we are open to see that um, tomorrow is a reflective of the image which the police have already painted, that there is peace, there is tranquility, and that they have monitored situation in all of the regions. They've engaged stakeholders. They've engaged the people. They've done community sensitization together with the military. And uh, we saw last on um, Friday night, I think on Friday night, there was a reshuffling in the military. The chief of defense staff, the deputy chief of defense staff, all of them were replaced by His Excellency President Julius Madabu. And um, as you can see, um, these are the new military heads now engaging people to see that um, everybody, everybody remains calm and that there is tranquility in the streets of Britain, as well as in Makeni, in Kamakwe, and in Mabuka. All, all right. Uh, thank you, Abdul, Abdul Malik. Thanks for the update. So basically, you said there's, there's calm. But let me ask this. Has the government in any way addressed any of the concerns uh, by the protesters? His Excellency President Julius Madabio was on the media on Friday night when he made um, some statements about um, the protests. He highlighted some of the efforts he has made with regards to um, cushioning some of the situations which the protesters have um, raised, but these are things he mentioned which have been done even before the protest. So it's like there is nothing done yet to address some of the concerns. Because he was talking about the free quality education which he launched in 2018. He spoke about the economic, um, the post corona the economic recovery programs that is launched. He spoke about um, a lot of women's empowerment, a lot of um, 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 issues that have to do with 
legality and all upholding fundamental human rights, press freedom, the repeal of the seditious libel law. He spoke about all of them, but these are issues that he had, he had done even before the protest. So not much has been done yet ever since the protest happened, except for the fact that there was a reduction in the price of fuel, which is a major driving force towards a price hike in the country. On um, Thursday, there was a reduction in the price of fuel from 20,000 leons, from 19,000 leons to now 18,000 18, leons, which in our new currency is 18 leons. So oh, okay. that's the only thing that we've seen which has changed. But uh, many will say it is, it is quite too soon to judge the, the actions of the government because the president only addressed the nation on Friday, and now we are on Sunday. It is a, it is a, it is a, um, a decision now of us to wait and see whether in the coming week or weeks there will be any further changes with regards to anything. Except All right, talking, to, to, talking, about, talking about judging the, the president's speech, let me quickly go to Honorable Abdul Kagbo. He's of the opposition All Progressives Congress there in Sierra Leone. Uh, Honorable Ka Abdul Kagbo, quickly now, you, you have the president's speech, and um, in that, what do you make of that speech? Let me start with that. Party, we were we are shocked that uh, the president on the 12th accused um, the, the father of his statement. He accused ABC, the World People's Congress, and this whole protest. You know, which is Dublin PPP. So, Ross, we found out that um, even without an independent investigation being conducted, our party has been accused by the president of being the financiers. And uh, everybody in this country can attest to the fact that prior to the protest, we issued a press statement disassociating ourselves from it. And even during and after the press. The, the, the protest, we also again, disassociating the party from it. So in no way is the involved in the in organizing or financing. So to us, we, 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 we see that the president has unjustifiably accused our party, you know, and this has the tendency to expose our party to public harm and to public aid. You see, furthermore, the APC party have, as usual, come out with public statement, totally disassociating ourselves. And then, um, to us, it was unfortunate that um, in the statement, we were of the opinion that the president's statement will be reconciliatory. The president's statement will address some of the concerns of the protesters. The president's statement will look at creating a cohesive and a united Sierra Leone. But we were shocked and um, surprised that the statement was only targeting the opposition, you know, without any fact. All right, you, you have talked about the accusations that the, the, the president uh, made against your party uh, in his speech. Uh, let, let's look at the issue of some of your members that have been, uh, you know, arrested and kept in communicado, as you say. If they, are true, if they were truly not involved in the protests, why would the government pick them up? is the one million question we are still looking forward to answer. Because even prior to the protest, some key stakeholders of our party were arrested at their residence and they were taken to an undisclosed location. Medke, who is one of our stakeholders in the party, was arrested in his house even when he told them times without number that he has nothing to do with the protest. He is not connected with the protest. He was arrested and he was kept in an undisclosed location. Even after the protest, most of our supporters are just arrested during curfew or they will go to their houses, they just pick them up and arrest them. So to us, this is a direct attack on the party for no good reason and there has not been any evidence to associate the party. So that we, have tell, we have told them unreservedly that we are a big political party and if we want to protest, we will issue out a press release, we will own up to it. But we, as a party, have not in any way associated. And prior to the protest, we, we won our supporters and we disassociated the party from it. We believe in democracy. 
and we have patiently waited for this government for over four years. And now it is only a few months to elections. We are sure of winning the elections through the ballot box. So we will not do anything that will us obstruct an election that is a clear winning for us, the opposition. So we think that government wants to use this to crack down on the opposition. Government wants to use this to arrest opposition members. Government wants to use this to, to keep the opposition quiet. As I'm talking, hundreds of our supporters are now incarcerated, and nobody knows where they are. All right, let me come to you, Abdul Malik. Uh, you, you, the arrests have been made, and there's most of them, or some of them, according to the opposition, are their members. How would you react to this arrest? Would it in any way help to calm things down, or would it fuel the discontent against the government? There is, a mix, there is actually a mixed reaction on social media and as well as in, in mainstream media here in Sierra Leone. Some Sierra Leoneans are calling for the president to use a much more reconciliatory approach, while others are calling him to use a very stiff approach with regards to the persons or the people who have been arrested um, on this particular protest and all. Um, just today, uh, the, former, the former information minister um, during the civil war in Sierra Leone was also on social media. He wrote a very lengthy article on it, calling for the president to be a father, to exercise his restraint, not to um, prosecute or, let me say, um, supervise a government that is calling or government that is um, actually um, 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 arresting, detaining um, people who are accused of participating in the protest. Why is um, the, also a senior government official is also on social media calling on the government, on the president to use a very hard approach on the, the just so to, just so to send a very strong signal that is in charge and that is a no-nonsense person. They are calling on the president to use his military approach. More so, we all know that our current president is a retired brigadier. He was a military officer. He was once a, a, a military uh, um, 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 head of state, and now he's now a civilian head of state. So many of them are saying that he, he has a military background and should use a military approach in addressing this issue. But some are saying that if he uses the military approach, he may not actually get the results he needs. Of course, the opposition are saying that the people that have been arrested now are their supporters. But initially, they said that the people that came out to the street are not APC supporters because they themselves had actually made a statement before the protest disassociating themselves calling on all their supporters to be law or abiding. So it is now very um, funny and confusing because they call their supporters to be law or abiding, not to indulge in any um, protest, but the police are saying that they are arresting protesters. Okay, uh, Abdul Malik, because, because of time, let's, let, let's uh, wrap this up very quickly. Uh, I have just one question uh, left for you and um, Honorable Abdul Kargo. What would you advise the government as the best way possible, starting with you, Abdul Malik, out of this scenario, out of this situation, what would you advise the government to do to get out of this? What, what I would advise the government to do in this stage is that to use a reconciliatory approach. Because even if you arrest people, you send them to jail or, or whatever, there will still be the hatredness in the society. What we need now is a reconciliatory approach that will unify the country. Because already we have a, a political system that is ethno-regionally and ethno-politically divided. The Temnes, which are the Northerners, are supporting one party. The Mendes, who are the Southeasterners, are supporting another party. So we need a unifying system. More so now that we are eight months away from elections, we really need a system that will bring, bring us all, all together. By the way, it is 10 months away from the election. All right, thank so, you. Thank you, Abdul Malik. Quickly, Honorable uh, Kago, what will be the gov best way for the government to resolve the issues in Sierra Leone right now? Before I get to that, let me just make a few corrections with um, what Abdul Malik said. Um, our supporters were not arrested during the course of the protest. 
they were arrested prior to the protest and after the protest. When the coffee was instituted, they would go to houses belonging to our supporters and arrest them, take them to an undisclosed location. So we are looking for how best government will be able to talk to the protesters and see how best government will be able to address concerns raised by the protesters instead of castigating the opposition. You see, they said one way to solve the problem is to identify the problem. If government cannot identify the problem and government remains to be castigating the opposition, there is highly likelihood that the problem will not be solved. So we want government to take a dialogue approach. We want government to take a diplomatic approach. These protesters are Sierra Leoneans. They are your citizens. If they come out in request of, uh, in, in, if they come, up, come out and say, because conditions of uh, service are not okay, think prices of commodity are skyrocketing, government should talk to them. They, these are their people. They should talk to them instead of using every, every, every response on the on the on the protesters All right. so as a political party we call government to change their approach let them be very diplomatic in their approach all right thank you thank you very much honorable abdul kago we'll have to end it there now